What is going on YouTube? What is going on Kansas City? And what is going on everybody? And welcome to the beat of KC. I'm excited. I'm ecstatic. I'm pumped to bring you guys this video because yet again, we are going to be talking about a draft pick that was taken by the Kansas City Chiefs in the fourth round with pick number 144. It is a position of need. In my opinion, it is defensive end and the player is going to be Joshua Kando from Florida State. Defensive end, you know, this really is a position of need. We have struggled to really apply pressure in a lot of situations on quarterbacks. At times, it feels like the quarterback has a, a, just an, a, an amount of time back there to do whatever he wants. And so it's going to be nice to at least see this addressed in the draft. You know, Joshua Kando is a big guy. He's definitely, you know, able to kind of get through and do some shifty things. So it's going to be absolutely amazing to see him get into the Kansas City Chiefs defense, really learn from some of the people we have in that defensive, you know, rooms. And it's just going to be exciting to see Kando really, uh, you know, become a Kansas City Chief. So if you're interested in seeing this video, I suggest you stay tuned right after this. Before we dive in and start talking about 6'6", 260 pound Joshua Kando, I ask that you guys smash that subscribe button, smash that like button, comment down below because it helps out way more than you guys know. This truly does help when you guys smash that subscribe button, when you smash that like button because it helps get these videos out to the YouTube universe and the people who are interested in these types of videos. So please smash that subscribe button, smash that like button, comment down below, and now it's time to get into the video. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said in the intro, I truly, truly feel that this is a position of need. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't think that this is fully done being addressed. You know, obviously we go through mini camp, we go through training camp, there's gonna be cuts at some point. There's still some very, very good free agency, or free agents, excuse me, that are just sitting out there from a defensive end position. You know, I think the defensive end position really needs to be addressed. We did address it in the draft. We were about to talk about Joshua Kando, but in all honesty, you know, when they start talking about having to potentially talk about putting Chris Jones as a defensive end, you know, that's where I really think this needs to be addressed because we see what Chris Jones is capable of doing from the D tackle position. And it's just let that man do what he has to do. So it was nice to see them address this in the draft. And I really like, you know, the prototype the, the skill set that Joshua Kando provides, as you guys are going to see in a ton of clips throughout this video. You know, he does have some moves and he does have some very quick movements at times. That's definitely something we're going to address. You know, as a defensive end, one thing that I really like to see because I was able and many of you guys were able to see how much Khalil Mack, Von Miller, I mean, Melvin Ingram, the list goes on and on, Joey Bosa, because we're in the AFC West. So we really get to see some very good, you know, defensive ends that have good quick moves, that have multiple, multiple moves. So that's what's nice. And so and when you come to compare defensive ends, you can see what the elite is in Khalil Mack when he was with the Oakland Raiders, now the Las Vegas Raiders. You get to see what Joey Bosa is able to do in a San Diego slash, you know, Los Angeles Chargers uniform. You get to see what Von Miller has been able to do his entire career so far in a Broncos uniform. Guys, those are some of the most elite, at least of the time period of what we're in right now. So it's nice to see Joshua Kando coming out of Florida State with the fourth round pick number 144. So let's dive in, start talking about his entire size, and then we'll get into some of his skill sets. So he did attend Florida State. He's from Baltimore, Maryland. He was a red redshirt junior. Uh, he is 6'6", 260 pounds, like I said. He is 30, or his arms are 34 and one half inches, and his hands are nine and a half inches. Man, holy smokes, Josh. So we're gonna talk about his player bio right now. So Kando pronounced Kane Doe was tabbed as one of the top defensive end prospects in the country and a U.S. Today first team All-American. After spending his senior season at IMG Academy, it sounds like a lot of people go to IMG Academy, whether it's basketball or in this case, football. 
The Baltimore native flash talent in his first two years in Tallahassee, earning playing time in all 13 games of his true freshman season. I heard he was an absolute monster. You know, I have seen some of his highlight tapes. I have seen some of his, you know, his playing time when he was a freshman. And this man had a motor. Let me tell you. Six and a half for 17 tackles, six and a half for a loss with four sacks, and then starting once in 12 appearances in 2018, 19 tackles, four and a half for a loss with three sacks. Came to appeared in three games with one start in his junior campaign, nine tackles, two and a half for a loss with one sack, but was for a loss the rest of the year with a lower leg injury. He started eight games in 2020, making 13 tackles, three loss, um, three for a loss and returned an interception for a touchdown, which seems to be on every single one of his highlight tapes for the draft. You know, I heard there has been some situations where he has been a little bit of injury prone. Obviously, as you can see, they put it in his player bio with a lower leg injury, taking him out for, uh, it sounds like, majority towards the end of the 2019 season. Um, so that's very interesting. So we'll see. Um, you know, he was a fourth round pick, pick number 144. So his overview, they did not give him any comparison. My personal comparison is honestly, and this is going to sound, you know, just, I guess, cliche, but I do feel he's very tunnel passing you out. You know, he kind of has that 6'6". He is 260. Not that he's necessarily a project, but I think he has that stature. He has that size. Um, and so that's definitely my comparison. So former five-star defensive end who looks the part but doesn't have the production to go with the traits. Kendo has good length, but is inconsistent in activating his pro uh, properly or activating it properly. Excuse me. As his upper body strength falls a little short, he doesn't have the natural gait and fluid movements of fellow Florida State University defensive end prospect Janarius Robinson, and tends to stay blocked once his opponent gets into his frame. There are occasional flashes as a rusher, but if he doesn't take an early lead, he's unlikely to get home. He might be worth a look later in the draft based purely upon the traits. You know, they had him projected going in the seventh round. The Kansas City Chiefs must see something that they really, really like because they took him in the fourth round, like I said multiple times now, with pick number 144. Um, so we're going to dive right into his strengths. A long NFL caliber frame with even more room for muscle. That's one thing I really wanted to touch on real quick is the fact that that is the comparison to you know, Tano passing out. Tano passing out came in with the size, really needed to learn the DN position, being down and, and understanding how all that worked. You know, I think Joshua is ahead in that aspect that he already understands how to truly play the defensive end position. It's just he needs to get a little bit more muscular, but also needs to probably get a little bit quicker in the feet in some aspects, probably develop a little bit more hands. And we're going to dive into all that. So it says adequate upfield spring off the snap and into neutral zone. Initial quickness and body lean help him knife into B gap on slants. Uses link to separate and set the edge. Capable of getting from one edge to the other with his rush counter. It says speed to power conversion potential as a pro. Length could become more effective rush weapon with work. So all that great information, you know, we do have to understand there is still a growth period for a lot of people. It doesn't matter who they are, where they're drafted. There still is a learning curve because they're going from college all the way to the pros. Like they're becoming a pro and like that's very obvious, you know what I mean? But there's still a ton of learning that can adapt and, and grow as they move to that next step. You know, you're constantly studying film. You have other professionals who have been doing it for a long period of time who are there as support and to help you. They're your teammates. I mean, you start to build good relationships. You get in-house and you have the coaching staff that are there to really break you down and, and work with you. And so I think there is a good chance Joshua Kando can continue to develop and become that much better. Some of his weaknesses has dealt with injuries and made just 10 career starts. We touched on that. I do feel he has been a little injury prone. It'd be nice to just see him get on track. Um, you know, I don't feel that he's going to be a starter coming out the gate by no means. So that would be something that you could see him really get healthy and then work his way into some playing roles. Looked as though he, uh, he would favorite his left ankle at times. Play tends to be segmented and lacks athletic fluidity. Uh, it says doesn't use size traits to command the rep. Below average rush with only one sack in his last 11 games. Inaccurate hand slaps fail to open outside rush lanes. Not enough bend to dip below the punch at the top of the rush. Runs out of gas during chase. So some of these things, obviously, 
like we've hit on in every one of these draft picks, the weaknesses, I feel a lot of them can be worked on. Um, and, and truthfully, it goes along with this hand movement, you know, different types of blitzes, you know, how you really come off the edge, different moves on those blitzes. Those can all be learned. Um, and, and, you know, you're learning from Frank Clark, you're learning from Chris Jones. Uh, you know, there's others that are there that you can obviously learn from. And that, like I said, this doesn't mean that we're not going to go out and sign another veteran like Melvin Ingram, like Justin Houston, that could, again, teach him more than what he really is even getting, um, you know, from a coach. I'm really excited for Joshua Kano to be a Kansas City Chief, like I am every one of these draft picks. I really am excited because I feel outside of offensive line, which was immediately addressed in free agency, also trades, also the draft. You know, outside of that, I feel... You know, nothing was really a standout need. And so it's nice to see the Kansas City Chiefs use the draft to go out and get players that they feel really fit their scheme, whether it is offense or defense, plug them in and use them as either depth or use them as however they please. I think Joshua Kendo is definitely going to be depth. You know, it's nice to see defensive ends get rotated in in different situations. We understand that, you know, it does get taxing when you're out there constantly on defense so to rotate in in certain situations it'll be nice to see and I think Joshua Kando can really learn from some of these key players like I said it's it's not to say that we're not going to go out and get a veteran like Melvin Ingram or Justin Houston or anybody else that may get cut later on it's just nice to know that we were able to fill something that they felt they needed and I do believe Joshua Kando fills a need at defensive end I want to thank you guys for coming by and checking out this video on the beat of KC. It means a ton. Smash that subscribe button. Smash that like button. And as always, have a good day.